You may think that I know too much, but now it's never too much. Because when push comes to shove, girl, just trust I won't get sick of us. You my salty crush. Uh -huh. I'm doing something different Your name's been on my tongue My cup's been looking for her You're picking by my walls And baby, let's settle up Cause lately the world's been going crazy And I gon' need somebody to turn Saltine and ginger ale That shit will never fail I keep it tough on my body Cause I don't feel well Girl, tell me something else we're here at the orchard. It's so nice up on top of the mountain. It's a lot cooler. There's a cute little barn there. It's a beautiful view of the Shenandoah Mountains here. This is also where there's a bold rock top room, which is one of my favorite cider places. So we'll probably go get a cider after we're done picking and that'll be really nice. You can see the vineyards in the distance there. They have peach trees here. And this is also where we pick apples in the fall. So I'll show you some apple trees later on. They have some of the apple trees here. You can see lots of apples on them. So excited to come in the fall. Their apples are so good. A little bit of a hike. We gotta walk up this road all the way to where those red signs are up here. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us as we went on a little peach picking adventure at our local orchard. It is always so much fun in the summer to go to these farms and just support all of these local places and also to get some really beautiful fresh fruit and produce. And now we're back home and it's time to get to work and start preserving all of those peaches. If you saw the box that we picked, we picked a half bushel which is about 25 pounds and we counted and we got exactly 50 peaches. 
So that's a pretty decent amount of peaches and we can't eat them all fresh. We are of course going to have a classic summer dessert, a peach cobbler. But even with that, we're still going to have like 22 pounds of peaches that we need to do something with. So today I'm going to be canning a couple of things in order to preserve those peaches. The first thing I'm going to make is a peach jam. And the recipe I'm following is in the ball canning book that I'm showing you here. And they don't actually have a peach jam recipe, but I'm following the apricot one because I think that's close enough. And I'm actually trying a jam that doesn't use added pectin. I've never done this before, but I thought it would be nice to try so that in the future I don't have to buy powdered pectin. I'm just starting by having and taking the pits out of my peaches and I have a big bowl of water and this water I've added a little bit of citric acid into because this will help the peaches keep from discoloring so I just make sure that the cut sides are dunked into that water and that should keep them from browning. The peaches we picked are not actually freestone peaches, but the pits surprisingly came out really easily, which I'm really happy about. Last year when we went to pick peaches at a different orchard, the pits were such a pain to get out and these ones were just amazing to work with. These are also probably the most beautiful and delicious peaches we have ever had. I think the time of year that we chose to go was just absolutely perfect. The half bushel that we picked only took us like 10 minutes because there were just so many peaches on the trees and they were all absolutely in perfect condition. By the way, I purposely picked out any of the peaches that were slightly underripe for this jam because underripe fruit actually has more pectin and that will help this jam set up a little better. I also think it's just a good idea anyway because jams usually have a lot of added sugar, so it's kind of nice to have a little bit of fruit in there that has different flavor profiles besides just sweet. So it didn't take me too long at all to prep those peaches and then to puree them, I'm using my food processor. So I'll have to do a few batches of this and in total I'll need 10 cups of pureed peaches for this recipe. And after the peaches are pureed, I have the pot that I'm going to be cooking them down in right next to there, so I'm just gonna throw the peaches in there. And then in this recipe, you'll also need some lemon juice, and then of course, lots of sugar for this jam. I'm gonna get this on the stove and turn it to medium heat and let this start warming up. And this is going to take a while to cook down, so while that's going, I'm going to start preparing the ingredients that I need for my next recipe, which is going to be a peach salsa. This is from the same ball book, and I am loosely basing it off of the summer salsa recipe. This one calls for four cups of chopped tomatoes, two cups of peaches, and two cups of pears. But instead of the pears, I'm just going to substitute that with peaches so that it is just tomatoes and peaches. And the other substitution I'm going to make is that instead of the quarter cup of balsamic vinegar, I'm going to be using apple cider vinegar instead. And for this recipe, I'm going to be using my food processor again, but I don't want to puree my ingredients. I want it to be more of a really fine dice. So I am going to prep my peaches by cutting them into chunks instead of into big pieces. This is just going to make it so that when I pulse them in the food processor later on, they're going to be processed into more even pieces. And I'm going to be doing the same thing with the tomatoes. By the way, for both my peaches and my tomatoes for the salsa and the jam, I do not bother with peeling either of those, even though that's what the book says to do. I've peeled peaches and tomatoes before, and I just think it is such a pain in the butt. And for both of these recipes, I really don't think it's going to make a difference whether or not I do that, because they're going to be pureed or chopped up into really small pieces anyway, so I'm just completely omitting that step. And personally, we don't really mind if there's little bits of peels of tomatoes or peaches in our food anyway. But leaving that one step out just really saves so much time and so much fuss, so I am all about that. So again, I am using the food processor, but this time instead of letting it puree the ingredients completely, I'm just pulsing it about eight or nine times until everything is in very small pieces but not completely pureed. And I'm gonna do this for all the ingredients. And it's really great to do this after I've already used this for the jam because then I don't have to clean out my food processor in between because there are peaches in both recipes, so that is great. In addition to the tomatoes, I will also need some onions and peppers. 
So those are all going through the food processor as well. Last year when I canned salsa, I diced everything by hand and it takes such a long time. So using this food processor is such a time saver, even though all the pieces are not as even. They're more of like little chopped chunks instead of perfect dices, but for the time that it saves, I think it is so worthwhile to pull this appliance out and just chop everything through it. Meanwhile, the jam has been heating up nicely on the stove, all the sugar is now dissolved, and you can see that it starts to get a little bit foamy once it's heated up, and you can skim off the foam if you'd like to. And it's just warm right now, it's not at the temperature we need it to be. After a little while longer, it is starting to boil more, and when I take the temperature, it is over 200 degrees, and the temperature you want it to get to is 218 degrees. I've stuck some spoons into the freezer so that I can do some tests to see when the jam is at the right stage. So you can see now when I put one of those frozen spoons in and dip it in, the jam that sets on there is very runny, so this is nowhere near done. After about 20 or 30 minutes, it took a really long time for this to boil down, but you can see that the volume has reduced significantly, and when I dip the spoon in, it comes off more in chunks and sheets, so this is close to being done. Sorry, I went a little bit out of the frame there, I didn't realize. At this point, I thought I was going to call it good. I think it could have gone a little longer, but honestly, the jam was boiling so ferociously. It was splashing on me, on my clothes, all over the floor and the stove and getting everything sticky, and I was just done with it and nobody had ever told me that making jam could be so painful so I decided if our jam was just a little bit runny I was okay with that because I just wanted this to be done with and I was pretty happy with the consistency of the jam on that spoon test so I am going to ladle this into my jars I'm doing half pint jars here and I am going to be leaving very little headspace just a quarter inch that's what the book says to do after all the jars are filled, I'm going to go around the rim of the jars with a paper towel that's dipped in vinegar just to make sure if any of that jam gets on the side of the jars, it's wiped off and doesn't hinder the seal. I'm going to put some canning lids on top and tighten the rings on so that they're just fingertip tight. And these are going to go in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. So those jars are coming out of the canner right now. I could only fit eight for the first batch, and I think I had one more jar left over of jam, so I ended up making a spice jam with the leftover mixture, which I'll show you later on. And while that was processing in the water bath canner, I went ahead and used the same pot to start putting together the ingredients for the peach salsa. And now that those are all ready to go, I can ladle those into those jars, and for this, I'm using pint jars. The colors of this salsa are so bright and summery, and this is my first time using this recipe, but it just looks so good. I cannot wait to try that salsa. This is my second or third year canning, and now that we have a garden where we can grow a lot more stuff, and I'm getting more comfortable with canning, I'm trying to do things in larger batches and in succession, so you can see here today I did two different recipes, because when you have all of that equipment out already, and I have this massive pot of water that I had to bring up to a boil, in order to can all this stuff, it just makes sense to do more than one thing. And I'm really happy with how this larger canning session went. Everything sealed just fine. These are the salsa jars that I'm pulling out of the water bath canner now, and those were in there for 20 minutes. And here are all of the finished jars. I ended up with eight half pints of the normal peach jam, and then that squatty little jar actually has the spice peach jam. For that one, I added a little bit of fresh ground ginger and also some ground allspice, and that came out really good, but I just wanted to do one jar of that since I wasn't sure how that flavor would come out. This jam is still a little bit warm right now, so you can see how it's still a little bit viscous, but I do have one that I'll show you later on that's set up really nicely in the fridge. And I ended up with five pints of that peach salsa, which looks so good in summary. This is going to be so nice to open up in the middle of winter because it just has all of those summer flavors in one jar. So here is the little leftover jam that I had that has the spices in it. And I didn't can this, I just stuck it in the fridge since it wasn't a full jar. And you can see how it's set up really nice and thick and this is a really good jam consistency. And I would definitely recommend those ginger and allspice additions if you're looking for something a little bit special. Thank you guys for following along with us in this video as we picked and preserved some of those fresh summer peaches. And we'll see you again in the next video. Bye.